Good morning. After the Civil Rights Act was passed, the banking industry, along with the government, instituted a policy of redlining. They drew red lines around black neighborhoods and refused to allow any economic development within those carved out or redlined areas. Now, 50 years later, the redlined towns and neighborhoods have never recovered. They are today's ghettos, Flint, Michigan, East St. Louis, etc. As a child, I lived in Dixie for a while in the South, and I never understood the hatred of white people towards black people, but it was real. It permeated our schools, our churches, and our neighborhoods. Hayfork has nothing but a bunch of hardworking, really beautiful people, but without any industry, we're drying up. If we continue, with the policy of redlining, our neighborhoods will permanently choke out of our, it will permanently choke out our future. The carve outs or redlining is social bigotry and nothing good will come of it. Without the cannabis industry in Hayford Valley, our schools will close, our stores will close, our restaurants will close, our medical clinic will close, the Roderick Center will close, etc. I love the drive up north on the three through Trinity Center to Coffee Creek. Beautiful forest, beautiful lake, beautiful homes. I understand that the people up there don't need the cannabis industry to keep fuel in their airplanes. But down in Hayford, we need it. We need dispensaries, we need manufacturing, we need distribution, all of it. Tourists will drive 90 minutes to come to Hayford Valley to buy some marijuana. And then they will fill up with gas, with the frontier fuel, and they will eat at the restaurants, and maybe even stay over at the Timberjack Lodge. Please, remove the hay fork red line. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Lisa Barrow. I'm here today to advocate for hay fork. Oh. I am holding the seven statements I have written and presented to this board and to the Planning Commission over the last six months. Along with the proposal for the Hayfork Cottage carve-out, I sent the Cannabis Ad Hoc Committee in January. You know me. Today I want to address the Hayfork carve-out, not the Lewiston carve-out, not the Roof Lake carve-out, and not the Weaverville carve-out. Those communities can advocate for their own positions in this process. I live in Hayfork. Instead of continuing to support the redlined carve out in Hayfork, which we all know will lead to more economic hardship, I urge this board to carefully consider creating clear opportunities inside the carve out for nurseries, distribution, manufacturing, and most importantly, retail. Instead of empty storefronts and closed restaurants, we want open businesses and busy streets. Instead of crashing real estate prices and nasty abandoned properties, we want remodeled homes and a thriving downtown. Instead of, losing stu instead of drug pushing squatters, we want employed homeowners and renters. Instead of losing students, and families in our school district. We want to build strong, healthy communities in Hayfork. Hayfork doesn't have a lake. We don't have a beautiful, historic downtown district. We do have an incredible brain trust of knowledge and experience in the cannabis industry. We do have several licensed cannabis sites in Hayfork Valley. Hayfork grows the most beautiful cannabis in the world. Stop the red line. Remove the carve out in Hayfork. Open the door to economic prosperity. The Hayfork Valley is uniquely positioned to become a first stop destination off of I-5 into the Emerald Triangle. If we build it, they will come. Please, let's grow Hayfork. Thank you.